I made a mistake. Here's what happened, and then how I knew I made a mistake. For starters, let me give a huge thanks to everyone who watched The Confederate Territory of Arizona. This web documentary film was a labor of love and I'm very proud of it. Over a year of intensive research went into this project before I even got to the production stage. Then the film was produced in five parts over eight months. The research never stopped during production, ultimately totaling over two years of ongoing research. There were moments where further investigations showed me mistakes I'd made from taking unproven claims and secondary sources at face value without following up. The mistake I made in parts 1 and 2 of the Arizona film was in calling the Arizona troops the Arizona Rangers. When I first started my research on this topic during the early pandemic, my interest was sparked by seeing a Wikipedia page on Company A of the Arizona Rangers. That name is repeated in the Wikipedia page on the Battle of Picasso Pass. The name Arizona Rangers is also used in Battlefields.org's page on Picasso Pass. Whichever folks made these pages were probably operating in good faith and probably just misinterpreted some primary sources the same way I did. I believed for almost two years that the Confederate Army troops raised under the Arizona Territorial Government were the Arizona Rangers. The person who planted the seed in my head that this is incorrect was Larry Hedrick. Larry is one of Arizona's leading citizen historians. He's the leading spokesman for a great channel called Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains, and they make amazing documentaries on Arizona history and lore, including ghost stories. Larry has produced a documentary on the Battle of Picasso Pass and has done a lot of heavy lifting in researching primary sources and walking through historic locations. He and I disagree as to whether the Confederates in the battle had uniforms. He thinks they did. I think most of them didn't. The only photograph I've seen of Captain Sherrod Hunter shows him wearing a dark blue uniform, which tells me it was a captured Union coat. Larry, however, points to requisition requests in which the Tucson area Confederates ask for military accoutrements. He has good points, but I still think most of the Rebs were in civvies because the Arizona troops were isolated and at the bottom of the logistical supply chain. Nonetheless, Larry's documentary on the Battle of Picasso Pass is a treat and very much worth watching. The uniforms is a pretty unimportant detail next to the events of the Arizona and New Mexico campaign. But the actual name and unit designation of the Arizona troops is important. Arizona's wartime territorial militia is the precursor to the Arizona National Guard, but we don't call the Arizona Guards and the Arizona Rangers the Arizona National Guard because it's simply not correct. In a lively exchange that Larry and I had in some YouTube comments a few months ago, Larry argued that the troops mistaken for the Arizona Rangers were actually Company A of Baylor's regiment. Larry cited Sherrod Hunter's after-action report on the Battle of Picasso Pass in which Hunter signs as a captain of Company A, with the report addressed to the military governor John Baylor. I didn't quite buy that, because the academic historian Boyd Finch revealed that Hunter wrote four different drafts of this report. Two of them addressed to Baylor, and two of them addressed to General Sibley. The one that was actually submitted to Baylor is the one that was ultimately published in the official records. Finch knows this because he dug through Hunter's personal papers at the National Archives. This tells me that Hunter was confused about his chain of command. That makes sense, because a lot of folks to this day are equally confused about that too. Captain Hunter was a Confederate soldier of the Arizona troops, and John Baylor was military governor of Arizona. However, when Sibley's brigade entered the Mesilla Valley, Sibley took command of all Confederate forces, including Baylor's 2nd Regiment of Texas Mounted Rifles, aka Cavalry. Sibley's brigade, with the 1st, 5th, and 7th Texas Mounted Rifles, combined with Baylor's 2nd Regiment, plus Company A of the Arizona troops, plus the few remaining Arizona militiamen, were combined into one chain of command that Sibley called the Army of New Mexico. General Sibley allowed Lt. Col. Baylor to continue serving as Military Governor of Arizona, while Sibley declared himself Military Governor of New Mexico, but still held command of Confederate forces in both territories. So who were actually the Arizona Rangers? And what was this mysterious Company A? This was not Company A of the 2nd Texas Mounted Rifles. That was a Texas company. Sherrod Hunter's Company A was attached to the 2nd Texas because that was the governor of Arizona's own regiment. Because he was a Texas soldier first and a territorial governor second. But Sherrod Hunter's Company A was an Arizona company. 
The Arizona Rangers were a territorial militia company recruited primarily from Mesilla. This militia company was organized under the provisional government in 1860 to protect settlers from Apache attacks in the central and western parts of the territory. When the provisional government of Arizona seceded from the Union but remained unrecognized by the Confederate States, the Arizona Rangers were a pro-Confederate militia, and that's all. Then, when John Baylor came riding in, caught the Yankees at San Augustine Pass, and declared the Arizona Territory to be a part of the Confederacy, the Arizona Rangers went from pro-Confederate militia to Confederate militia, along with the other territorial militia companies. It wasn't until I was in production of Part 5 of the Arizona film that I saw Hunter's own quote cited in a secondary source, confirming that in 1861 they ceased to be Arizona Rangers and then joined the Confederate Army for four years of fighting back east, which, in his words, was much more civilized than their wars against the Apache Nation. In August of 1861, most of the men in the Arizona Rangers joined the Confederate Army, but the majority of the Arizona Rangers and Arizona Guards joined the Confederate Army's Arizona Troops. When the majority of the Arizona Rangers and Arizona Guards joined the Confederate Army's Arizona Troops, those two militia companies became defunct. Some of their veterans might have clung to the nickname Arizona Rangers while in the Army, but legally, the unit that Baylor created for them under his self-proclaimed authority as military governor was Company A of the Arizona Troops. By early 1862, it became Company A of the Arizona Cavalry Battalion. The company was commanded by Sherrod Hunter, while the battalion was commanded by the exiled California Confederate Philemon Herbert. Some deep dive researchers know this unit as Herbert's Battalion of Arizona Cavalry. Well, it was the only battalion of Arizona Cavalry, so it's the Arizona Cavalry Battalion. However, for whatever reason, Hunter was not reporting to Herbert, he was reporting directly to Baylor. Two of Hunter's other drafts show that he also thought about reporting directly to Sibley, who was now Baylor's commanding officer in theater, showing that there was some confusion in the chain of command. He also probably had orders to report to Baylor directly instead of to Major Herbert, who would have been his immediate ranking commander within the battalion. Veterans of the Arizona Rangers were joined in Arizona Company A by recruits from other militia companies like the Minutemen of Pinos Altos and the Arizona Guards of Pinos Altos and Tucson, as well as other militiamen scattered around Tucson and Tubac. These recruits from the other companies were assigned to Companies A and B of Herbert's Arizona Cavalry Battalion. The third company in the battalion was the San Elizario Spy Company, also known as the Santa Fe Gamblers. These guys were recruited from New Mexico and West Texas before Sibley invaded New Mexico proper. Then during the New Mexico campaign, they raided into Colorado and recruited some men from there as well. In 1861, two sergeants and seven privates from the San Elizario Spy Company were transferred to the understrength Company A, along with one officer, six NCOs, and 20 privates from Baylor's 2nd Texas Cavalry. So the Company A, whose small detachment skirmished with the Federals at Picasso Pass, was Company A of the Arizona Cavalry Battalion. Hopefully that clears up the confusion about the so-called Company A of the Arizona Rangers, which was not a thing. So Larry Hedrick was right that the Confederate soldiers in Tucson in the spring of 1862 were not the Arizona Rangers, they were Company A. But I still insist that the Arizona Company A was attached to Baylor's regiment, but not actually part of the Texas Cavalry. It was the Arizona Cavalry. Now here's a mistake I cannot believe I made, but I did. This is not a photo of Colonel Dan Showalter. This is a photo of Confederate General Joe Shelby. Oh my god, I totally did that. I totally did that. I did that in front of the entire world. Thousands of people have now seen the Arizona documentaries. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe I did that in front of the world. Um, I obviously did not know that was Joe Shelby. There was like a million and a half people in the Civil War. There was like a million and a half guys and a whole bunch of women too, all right? I had no idea who Shelby was until one of my viewers specifically pointed out that mistake. So you know who you are. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I'm not the only one who got it wrong. The Hamilton historical website got it wrong as well and a couple of other sources. You know, usually Hamilton County history is really outstanding with the primary sources. This is one of the few times that they made a mistake, but we addressed it. So this picture is Daniel Showalter before the war. We do not, to my knowledge, have any pictures of Showalter during the war or immediately after. 
Which means I have to recut the Arizona documentary series, which I was going to do anyway. Recut them into one film. Uh, take out the photos and moving graphics of Joe Shelby. And I also want to do a couple of other fancy things like replacing all the portraits with moving pictures like I used in part 5. So, please forgive me and bear with me here as I'm cleaning up my side of the academic street here. And for those of you who have been waiting, finally, no more delays, I will release the Confederate Territory of Arizona book by Labor Day. You have that as a commitment. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting the Civil War Wild West edition. And please, like and subscribe. It does help out the channel. Have a happy 4th of July and be safe on the road tonight.